Karen, what is it about mathematics that we can say with such confidence that it is true? Well, if you talk to some computer scientists who have studied the problem, they will tell you all the holes in the logic that mathematicians use. However, mathematical, uh, let's just say that mathematical thinking is very robust historically. That we go back and we look at arguments that Greeks made on mathematics mm -hmm. and we understand them. And I, I don't think that, uh, I don't certainly believe in any, any sort of infinite truth or beauty or anything, but I think the way of mathematics thinking has stood the test of time to last for a long time. Hmm. We don't prove theorems and have them disproved, um, you know, 20 years later or uh, even 50 years later. So talking about proofs, so uh, th there's a very rigorous logical process, but it has right. to start with a set of axioms so that you kind of have to assume as uh, a priori brute fact or however you describe it. Well, but again, if you talk to uh, certain logicians and people in computer science, they will tell you that the axioms that we use in mathematics are full of holes. Mm -hmm. uh, in other words, it, but however, whatever it is, it's a construct that is very robust. Mm. That is, the, the questions about is the axiom of choice true or false? And uh, in, in fact, you can have systems in which one is true and systems in which the other is true, mm. but uh, this is not something that actually uh, ever enters into the practical mathematics that we do when we construct mathematics. Mm. Uh, the mathematics we use when we construct mathematics is uh, set on a set of assumptions that is, again, very robust. To call it closed logically is not correct. Mm -hmm. And Gödel's uh, yes, famously yes, in yes, that. Yes, 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 yes. <clears throat> But if you, if you look at mathematics today, even what seem to be on their surface simple problems uh, have these elaborate proofs that are hundreds of pages. Yes. The famous one now is 500 pages right, that, are, right. that, are, that are proofs that if you believe what you hear, that every line has to be there or something would not flow with the, with ro the robust logic of which you speak about. But when you get at such length and such depth, it, it, it just... It just seems, um, it just, it, it just, it, it's, it's hard to know what to make of that. Well, the, the point is, is that it's checkable in the small would be, it's very long, but uh, it's broken down into pieces that are checkable. And uh, yeah, I remember the anecdote that uh, when someone asked me, uh, would they bet their house on the classification of finite simple groups? <laughs> and the question was, well, maybe you should or maybe you shouldn't, because that's another famous problem, uh -huh. which is, uh, I don't know whether it's, it's been shortened since <laughs> then, but uh, that, that's another very long, complicated classification scheme. And uh, it, basically, it's, it's pretty much right. You know, this, this if it, to get off topic a little bit, this does enter into the question of computer-generated proofs. Mm -hmm. The question is, is if you actually put some steps on a computer, should you trust it as much as you do your own thinking processes? And many people who get involved in this uh, do have theorems that have bits and pe or pieces or constructions that are done on the computer. Mm -hmm. And very I have been told by people who have used this that they believe what's on the computer just better than they do their own calculations. Really? Yeah, mm -hmm. right. Mm -hmm. that, so it's not, it's not one of these things that, at least in my view, is 100% sure, mm -hmm. clear. It's just so good that we haven't really found any real holes in it lately. <laughs> uh, just to use a current example that, uh, that, that kind of uh, gave me a, a startle when I read it, it seemed very simple at the beginning that, that the, some people have proved the, uh, the number of steps you have to go through in multiplication. And instead of n squared, uh, which is the normal way we multiply rows of numbers, right. it was, it's, it's something less than n squared. A, right. a number, and I was following, it sounds interesting, you know. Interesting. And then I saw the final line, and it said, yes, but this only applies if there are, I think, 20 trillion, 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 10 to the, 10 to the 27th numbers of digits. 
<laughs> I see. Well, yeah, to me... To and, me and if it's less than that, this may not apply. Yeah. And I was just bowled over by that. Right, right. Well, <laughs> yeah, this is, this is the, this is, this actually comes into the realm of mathematics that may have gone off too far away from <laughs> external influence or something. Well, I, I don't know I, if that's good or bad, because I, if that's true, I mean, to me, that's a remarkable statement about the way reality is, that this proof works with 10 to the 27th numbers of zeros, but anything less than that, we're not sure. Yeah, I mean, well, that, to me, is a, is a breathtaking result. Well, you know, the human mind is amazing. <laughs> so in, in, a way, in a way, the elaborate things we can do with mathematics are pretty amazing. Yeah, I mean, they I, really are. And not only that, we can not only do them, but other people can understand them. Meaning maybe you can't, I can't, right? right? right. But uh, such a, presumably, I, I don't actually know the results you're talking about, but presumably <laughs> the, this, was, uh, this was something that was done by uh, uh, presumably somebody on the edge of computer science, yeah, actually. Yeah, yeah. Right, sure. And 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 but he has colleagues that or she has colleagues who check it. Right, right. Right, and and it is and it was robust. a mathematical proof. Yeah, yeah. right, and it, it's a mathematical proof. And right. as I said, it's not that there's a, a logic to mathematics which is without holes, hmm. but it's that it's robust. It's really much better than most of our ways of thinking mm -hmm. as human beings. Mm. In fact, you know, in a, in a way, we're spoiled as mathematicians because our, 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 our thinking is relatively solid. It's when we get to other problems in real life <laughs> that we say, oh, my God. <laughs> yeah. Paying those phone bills. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the concept of beauty in mathematics is, is somewhat related in that beauty, sometimes it's people, elegance is normally something that is small and short, so you can, in a very, sh very concise way, describe some big things. Uh, but yet, um, uh, when you have these hundreds of page pr proofs, people think that they're beautiful. So, so w what is it about a 500 page proof uh, that can be beautiful as well as a, a very short mathematical uh, Einstein's equation right. or, or Euler's equation? Well, you know, I, I don't think the 500 pages is beautiful. Okay. okay. Well, okay. The point is, is that there are going to be ideas within that. The key point, for example, which is absolutely gorgeous. Mm. I mean, th this is, this is wh what do I want to say? Uh, um, y you know, uh, well, yeah, use my example, because when people say, you know, uh, why do you like mathematics or what's beautiful about it? I say, well, you know, it's really hard to explain. Can you explain why Beethoven quartets are beautiful? Mm -hmm. Or can you explain why climbing a mountain? is a beautiful experience, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And uh, the point is, is that, you know, your 500 page proof is the slog through the jungle to get to the mountain. Is that right? Some, <laughs> no, some people would disagree with that. Some people would say well, that okay, that 500 I, page thing, in other words, in order to prove that, unless somebody comes up with a, a simpler and a shorter proof, but let's say they can't, right. then that is beautiful in that because tying together these two things are so remote from each other that you have to go through this elaborate path. That's the only way to get it. Well, I mean, that has to, that has to, if that's the case. Well, usually it's not the only way, okay. first of all. Uh, I mean, uh, the, the history is full of better proofs of yeah, such and true. such and so forth. Right. So, uh, and I don't know, this is, this is my opinion that uh, really it, it's the key ideas and the fitting together of them, yes, but the 500 pages of proof is in itself, that's not pretty. Yeah, the example I gave you of this, uh, uh, math, this multiplication, simplification that only applies to 10 to the 27th digits, to me, if that's true, just that statement, to me that, that's beautiful because it's this, it's this perception of the world beyond beyond the the, the, the any right. possibility of uh, of of uh, uh, our physical reality and that kind of number doesn't make any sense that's right uh, yeah. and yet and yet it, it, somebody has proved something that is definitive within that within that structure yeah, yeah that's right but i mean you, you know 
to tell you the truth, the age of the universe doesn't mean too much to me either. But uh, the fact is, is if you talk to somebody about cosmology mm -hmm. and about the origins of the universe and about the future of the universe, this is all, uh, this is like, you know, uh, 10 to the 27 <laughs> numbers. Yeah. It's 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 beautiful concept and a beautiful description of, well, I would say claim that it's a mathematical, that it's a, a description that tends to use mathematical language of what we think might have happened. Mm -hmm. And it seems to me to have uh, the, some of the same flavor as, as what you say uh, about mm. about uh, an idea in mathematics that needs ten to the twenty seven uh, digits to be valid. Do you uh, is beauty something in your work that is something that you look to do, or is it something that you only recognize after the fact? Oh, I, I you find it when you're reading something and you grasp an idea. I mean, uh, I, I don't think. Uh, I, I couldn't slog my way through from, you know, beginning to end without having glimpses of some, some something that's really neat, mm -hmm. something that really is is something unexpected. It has to have a little bit of unexpectedness, um, something that you thought you couldn't you, you couldn't be done, um, just a, a, a new even just a new proof of something that suddenly comes up with something, you say, oh, yeah, hey, that isn't really all so complicated. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but uh, uh, I, I, I actually, uh, I, I'm, I'm always sort of a little bit uh, upset when people say, I don't have a mathematical mind or I don't like mathematics or so. Because I, I don't really think that, the, that the, our brains do mathematics all that different from the way we live? It seems like to me like a part of us that we develop, and uh, it, it isn't something off there that's different and inhuman and not connected to anything. It's pretty far away, but you know there are a lot of situations in real life where one segment of real life gets very far from the other mm -hmm. segment of real life like class differences and so forth. So the fact that mathematicians seem very different uh, doesn't mean that they aren't people and that their brains don't work like people's <laughs> brains work. 